Hello there and welcome back to the Geodynamics video lectures on plate driving forces. This is lecture number five on the topic where we'll cover the other part of the slab pull force. So in the previous lecture we talked about the slab pull force that results from the slab being colder than the mantle surrounding it and here we're going to look at the component of the slab pull force that is the result of the olivine to spinel phase transition that takes place in the subducting slab. Now, just as a reminder, in the previous lecture we noted that there were two components to the slab pull force uh, and that the combined component due to the colder slab relative to the warmer mantle and then the olivine spinel phase transition component those two combined give us the total slab pull force. Okay, now here's the kind of key concept for the second part of the slab pull force, and that is what's shown here in the figure of the olivine to spinel phase transition. And this generally takes place at depths of about four to 500 kilometers depth in the mantle. But as you can see here, we have a plot of pressure and temperature in a line here that is the phase transition. This is the Clapeyron curve. And as you can see, that um, depending on the relative temperatures and pressures of the material, you'll have this phase transition take place at different pressures or temperatures. So we can illustrate that pretty easily like this. Now, if we've got a relatively cold slab that's sinking down into the relatively warm asthenosphere, then we might expect to see a phase transition at lower temperature um, and the point at which you'd intersect the Clapeyron curve here would actually be at a lower pressure or in other words shallower depth than for a relatively warm slab where we might have higher temperatures and then the phase transition occurring at a relatively higher um, pressure or deeper depth. You can see that then kind of schematically shown here. This would be sort of like a cross-section view through a vertically subducting slab. So this would be the mantle asthenosphere over here and over here. And this is our descending lithosphere here. And these lines then are dividing it from the surrounding asthenosphere. The line here, TOS, is the uh, temperature of the olivine to spinel phase transition. And so, um, we can see that that temperature changes because the subducting slab is relatively cold compared to the surrounding mantle material. And so that phase transition actually takes place at a relatively shallow depth. And because you transition from a less dense phase to a more dense phase, that can drive the slab pull force. So this isotherm TOS is the um, temperature for the phase transition and you can see here then that there's this region where you've transitioned already to the more dense phase that's not present on either sides in the asthenosphere and so that's the source of the force. The relationship looks something like this where you can see here um, the temperature difference that we have seen previously between uh, the center of the convection cell and here the temperature at the base of the lithosphere or the lithosphere asthenosphere boundary. Now we have a gamma term in there, and that's the slope of the Clapeyron curve, so that would have been from the plot on the previous slide. And then this delta rho OS is the gravitational acceleration. That's the difference in density between olivine and spinel. That's what the O and the S come from. And then there's the reference density down there in the bottom. Thermal conductivity, or sorry, diffusivity. And then here is our lambda from uh, again, this is two times the width of the convection cells, two pi, and then there's the average horizontal velocity, u naught, and that whole term goes to the one half power. The size of the phase transition uh, density difference is about 270 kilograms per cubic meter. It's actually relatively big, uh, and that's the reason that this force is significant in terms of the slab pull. So if we plug in our kind of typical values, um, what we would find for this component of the slab pull force is that it's about 1.5 times 10 to the 13 newtons per meter. And so that's about half the uh, slab pull force from the slab being cold relative to the surrounding material. So it's big. And uh, if we then 
go to our original equation here and add those two together, we find that the combined total slab pull force is about 4.5 times 10 to the 13 newtons per meter. And again, just try to have um, that number in mind in, uh, for reference in the next video lecture where we'll look at the ridge push force and the drag force as well. So 4.5 times 10 to the 13 newtons per meter. Okay, so that's it for our second lecture on the slab pull force, and it's time then to go ahead and take the quiz and see what you've learned. And when we come back for the final lecture on plate driving forces, we'll talk about ridge push and the drag force.